Ladies and gentlemen, Football Scoop Podcast is back. We're here for a special edition, Arizona State football. Herm Edwards is uh, no longer the head coach. The job is open. Um, we'll see what happens the rest of the way, but the firm expectation is they go outside the program. New football coach, and uh, there's a lot of questions at the very top of Arizona, Arizona State Athletics. There is no surprise that Herm Edwards is no longer the coach. I think there was a lot of surprise that he even got to coach a couple of games this season. This summer uh, was not a good summer for the program. Uh, this past spring was not a good – they've got so many issues there and lame duck status, and it just wasn't going to work. So changes happened. Uh, there will be – there is already. There's massive interest in this job. It's a great job, to be honest. Uh, you're going to have – coaches that you couldn't even imagine interested in this job. If Arizona State chooses to go with uh, Young and Bright, they got 10 options. If they go with Grizzly and Veteran, they got 10 options. If they go with a guy who's really winning at a place where he can win even more there, they got 10 great options. Uh, so, you know, we have to find out over the next few weeks who's going to actually be the decision maker, who's going to be in the room. And uh, we'll see where it goes. We've got uh, Zach Barnett, John Bryce, Gentlemen, good to see y'all. Zach, why don't you give us give us some thoughts and then give us some names and 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 John and I will tell you you know what we know about these guys, what we've heard over the past six months or over longer, and what their interest might be in this job. Yeah, so uh, you know, first off, you know the dynamic within most states is you know the university of the quote unquote flagship school is closer to the population centers. And then the the state university is, you know, quote unquote, the cow college out, you know, in more rural, you, you know, that dynamics present in Washington, Oregon, Texas, Oklahoma, Mississippi, you know, lots of different states are like that. Arizona is not like that. Arizona State is has the opportunity to be as much a quote flagship school as the University of Arizona. It's right there in Phoenix. That's, you know, demographically, it, it's one of the you know, it's a growing area. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's profile is rising in recruiting. You know, I, I went back through, uh, the last four years of, um, recruiting rankings and an average of 26 players from the state of Arizona signed with power five schools, uh, with a high, a high of 34 in 2020, a low of 21 last year, but an average of 26 kids a year are signing power five scholarships. Do you guys know how many of those four classes within the top 10 signed with Arizona State. So you're talking total of 40 players, 10 per year in the last four years. How many of those guys signed with Arizona State? I'm going to guess it's not a lot. Two. Two is incorrect. The number is zero. Oh, my goodness. Arizona, the highest they signed was the number 15 player in 2021. Arizona State has not signed a top 10 player in the state of Arizona since 2017. Not one since 2017. So obviously, whoever hires, whoever the hire is, has got to fix that. Arizona, and then you're not going to lock down the state of Arizona. There's a lot of transplants, a lot of kids looking to get out. But Arizona State should do really well. They should do better than they're doing in recruiting. They should do really well in the transfer market. You know, you look at a kid like Spencer Rattler, went to Oklahoma. He's from the Phoenix area. He ends up at South Carolina. Like if you're the Arizona State head coach, you got to go get the next Spencer Rattler when he transfers. And then uh, uh, lastly, one thing that I think is going to come up in the conversations, whoever gets this job, is USC and UCLA leaving the Pac-12 Pac hurts Arizona State because obviously you're going to you're recruit Phoenix, you're, you're going to recruit Vegas, and then obviously you're going to recruit Southern California. And you can go out there and say, hey, we're just a short flight away and we're playing one game a year. Uh, that's a home game for you in L.A. Now – you know, you're playing road games if you're a California kid every single week. You don't have a presence in Southern California. So it's just to me, it's just one of the weird dynamics of college football that if you're interviewing for this job with ASU president Michael Crow, you know, you'd be like, hey, uh, it really helped my job if we could get San Diego State in the Pac-12. So we'll at least have some sort of Southern California presence. And he's like, well, you know, their their chemistry department's not ranked very high or something like that. It's just it's just a really weird dynamic within college football. I'll tell you guys, I have been to games at Arizona State, have been practiced at Arizona State. Uh, that's the type of program that, A, should thrive in recruiting, no question about it, but they should 
dominate the transfer portal. Dominate it. Bring a 20-year-old, 21-year-old, 22-year-old man to that campus and just let him walk around and you win. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Then the chance to, to thrive there, to win there. I mean, they should be a constant Pac-12, you know, playing in the, in the championship game, and which, you know, theoretically jumps you up to, to the playoff. Uh, there's no reason you should not win there. You should win, win well. You should recruit great. I mean, how is a 17-year-old boy not choosing to go there? It's, I mean, that's, that's the, that's Herm Edwards. Man, what were you doing? What were you doing that your program is in trouble for all these alleged egregious recruiting violations and you have nothing homegrown to show for it? Like, so that's just mind boggling. Here's the other thing uh, about this job. And you guys outlined some, some great elements to it. They've done a lot with facilities. They play in great facilities. They have gra- greatly and vastly upgraded their facilities. It is a really good job. I can tell you all the way back in 2021, as crazy as that cycle was, there were a lot of coaches asking me about the Arizona State job because they believed it would be open after last season, and they believe it to be a very plum job. And I would agree with that. And, and you make a good point about it's weakened a little bit by the departures of UCLA and USC that are forthcoming from the Pac-12, but it's still a really good job that you can win at. If you can get those questions answered to what you believe is necessary and figure out what kind of stable path is going to go forward for the Pac-12 and who are some of those most likely new programs to join it and and maintain its buoyancy, then I really think it will be one of the uh, prime positions that opens up during this cycle. So give me some, give me some names and we'll talk, give you some thoughts. Yeah. So the thing about Herm, usually, you know, for better or worse, most head coaching hires go by the rule of the opposite. You, whatever you soured on the last time, you go out and get the opposite of that. Herm was so outside the box that I think we can all see this next guy, whoever he is, going in a number of different directions. So I've got a list. I think they all kind of fit into different uh, categories. So we'll start with uh, current F, uh, current FBS head coaches, um, you know, Brian Harson, Kalani Sataki. Uh, Jonathan Smith, Troy Calhoun, Charles Huff. Like th- those are guys I've seen thrown out there. Talk me through those guys. <laughs> you threw out a lot of names there. <laughs> Brian Harson was uh, exceptional at Boise State. Uh, it's, it's just not fitting at Auburn for whatever reason. Probably not going to be carried off on the shoulders like somebody had, had discussed. <laughs> uh, Harson could do real well out there. Again, you know, I think somebody's got to go in there and recruit real well. Could be Harson, could not. I don't know. He'd fit. We'll see. He's got a good job right now. Yeah, I don't. I don't see it with uh, Harson. Um, uh, I think probably Kalani Satake um, ha- has maybe had some chances to uh, explore some other opportunities, and he has not. That doesn't mean he wouldn't listen to this one um, because of what it has going for it, but. Uh, with BYU's pending move away from independence into a Power Five conference, I'm not sure what Kalani would gain uh, with the Arizona State job. Charles Huff makes a lot of sense. I think that Charles Huff uh, will be a viable candidate in, in the pool of coaches for this Arizona State job. I absolutely uh, believe that. And then um, I think that we're going to get through a, a number of different ones. I, I agree with Scott. I don't see the Harson move. I don't think it's right for Satake. I think there would be interest, um, but I think Huff, there could potentially be mutual interest. Well, so I'll make sure I clarify. I'm not saying I, I don't know that Harson would. I think Harson. Oh, yeah, right. I know. No. Really good fit and could be a negotiated deal that could work out for a lot of people. So I don't want to take that off the table. I agree with you, Connor Satake. He's in a great place. I don't know that Arizona State's any better than BYU. Um, I think BYU wants, loves him. Loves him and would match anything. So I don't see Kalani getting out of there. Right. Uh, Troy Calhoun, you, you brought up. Troy Calhoun gets brought up for a lot of jobs. He doesn't get them. I'm not sure why that is. You know, they they donkey conged Colorado, which was great. And then they laid an egg against Miami. I know they had a bunch of injuries and a bunch of guys out. I don't know. You feel like Troy would need some more recruiting chops and some more um, panache behind him at you know for this season. And I'm not sure it's there. Who else did you mention, Zach? What about Jonathan Smith? Yeah. 
man, I don't know. He's at his alma mater. They're going to pay everything they can. So way back when, I'm going to say uh, way back when, 10 years ago, the, the Pac-12 money was starting to grow and Oregon State did not do what everybody else did. They didn't immediately invest in the program. They really struggled. Now they're getting to the stadium and, and they're starting to invest heavier. They realize they have to compete. The money is growing a little bit. I think Oregon State does what they got to do to keep him. I don't think they're letting him out of there. There's, I just don't see it. Okay, yeah. these are two guys that uh, we're – Actually, I'm going to throw three guys in that we have to mention pretty much any time a Power 5 job comes open until they do or don't take one. Uh, let's start with Matt Rule. I don't, see I, don't, I don't think you can sell it to your fan base, especially with how things are going. I just don't see it at all. I don't either. Okay, uh, number two, Dion. I could see it, yeah. Um, I could see there being interest. I could see him being exactly – I'm telling you, um, without walking over coaching graves, so to speak, I think that Dion will be associated, and rightfully so, with uh, multiple Power Five openings in this cycle, and this would be one of the ones I would expect. Look at look at his past with his prep ties in the Dallas area uh, and what he was able to do. Look at how he's recruited to Jackson State. Like I said, um, when we were talking about another position last week in Nebraska, um, if you can recruit to Jackson, you can recruit to Lincoln. Um, if you can recruit to Jackson, you can bring everybody to Arizona State. It's such a plot, a plum spot. So, Deion's uh, Deion would be a home run at Arizona State. He so I don't want to uh, bring the room down a bit, but I think it bears mentioning. I wrote a story, I think it was 2018, going back research. Since 2000, the only school that fired a black head coach and then hired another black head coach, it happened one time, was East Carolina. And I don't believe since then it's happened. So, if they do hire Dion or another black coach, then they're breaking a lot of uh, a precedent within college football hiring. So um, I just thought we should throw that out there. Uh, moving on, Hugh Freeze. Yeah, I think uh, I think Hugh would absolutely go for that job. Hard to say if Arizona State would be interested in Hugh, especially with the um, allegations that are going on uh, with Herm Edwards' program right now. Although if you dive in, to the allegations with, with Hugh Freeze, a lot of that stuff, uh, a lot of the NCA stuff at Ole Miss um, really fizzled out into very minuscule elements um, of the NCA investigation. I think he would play super exciting ball. We all have respect for Hugh as a, as a ball coach, and we just saw over the weekend what he did with his Liberty squad at West uh, Wake Forest, and we've seen repeatedly now how much he coaches up the Flames and it's super exciting football. And in addition to making the right hire, Arizona State's also got to do somebody that helps attract eyeballs because it's a competitive market. Hugh runs a system and runs it very well. Uh, I think Hugh would be very successful there. Again, uh, like John, I don't know if, if Hugh gets the call. Hugh, I think, would in, uh, he would entertain this one because it is a place where you could get to the college football playoff. And if you can get there, you can get a championship. So he would entertain it. He would be, he could, he, he could win there. There's no doubt about it. Uh, he also brings an established proven system that Herm came in there and Herm was kind of putting things back together. It's not NFL, it's college. I'll bring some NFL guys in to try and do it different. And it, they seem to change their identity every year or so. So he would come in and say, this is what we're going to do. Okay, let's uh, move to the uh, different category, the up-and-coming assistant, uh, up-and-coming coordinator. I think we got to start here with uh, Kenny Dillingham. Local kid, you know, from Phoenix. Um, I think he went to Arizona State. You know, he was at Chaparral, which, you know, power in Arizona high school football. Um, you know, I think he g would at, at, at Arizona State and has done very, very well. You know, went with Mike Norvell. Uh, who's another name that, you know, you got to throw Mike and Jay Norvell in the conversation. Um, Kenny's young, right? He's young 30s, like 32. He's at Oregon, just getting things going. Kenny would absolutely be interested. He's young, you know. It, it, are we ready to hand the reins to a 32-year-old? It's happened with success, but, you know, again, it depends on who's making the hire and, and what's going on in their mind. Yeah, I think he would. Uh, I think he would make a lot of sense, and um, they obviously is very have very quickly 
uh, appeared to write things at Oregon. He's been sort of a rising star uh, in the coaching circles for a long time, and um, he's already got some big-time programs on his resume. Uh, what about uh, Alex Grinch, USC defensive coordinator? I mean, he's going to get a shot, but I don't think – I don't think now is the time for that. I don't know that um, – I don't know that what they're doing defensively right now is going to help him in that conversation, even though it's hard to, to pin all on Alex because um, they're behind defensively and they're still trying to get some horses there to, to run what he wants to run. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't see that at all. I don't think that um, – I just don't think that has enough cachet to do what you needed to do with your fan base. And I'm not saying you have to win the press conference, but you have to make a higher – that gives you a chance to win the press conference and generate the right buzz moving forward for your program. Yeah, that it just doesn't seem to be in the top ten of likely ones. But who you knows? But I, that that wouldn't be in my top ten. Uh, going by the the rule of the opposite that I uh, referenced earlier, it doesn't seem like uh, Arizona State will go to the the uh, rebound candidate, the the out of out of head coaching guy. Uh, considering uh, Herm was out of coaching, but uh, what about a uh, a Dan Mullen or a Tom Herman? Really good football coaches. I could probably see it a little bit more with uh, Dan Mullen. His success is more recent. Um, I mean, he he had a couple of good teams. Even in 2020, he was rolling, and then it just sort of cascaded into 21 and ended up being his downfall. But um, – He's proven really, really good with quarterbacks, and he's won in the toughest conference uh, to win in, and he's been a part of a national championship staff with with Urban Meyer. So I could see I could see Dan Mullen being in there, interested in Nebraska or Arizona State, and I could see either of those programs at least uh, reciprocating that to kick the tires. I think both are really good coaches. I think both would, well, are interested. And uh, we'd love to have the conversation. It's just a personality thing at that point. You know, do they click? Do they not click? You know, um, to me, out of those two, I think Tom almost would fit a little better. You know, you got Cliff Kingsbury in town. Uh, you know, you bring in another guy like that, and all of a sudden this whole town's popping young, exciting brand of football. Uh, so I can kind of see them skewing younger with Tom over the, uh, over Dan out of those two. But both are good, good ball coaches. Both clearly would be interested. I mean – everybody's going to be interested. It's a great job. Right. Okay. These guys are uh, former head coaches that are uh, coordinators at the power five level right now. Um, Todd Munkin, Bill O'Brien, Derek Mason. Um, I don't know that any of the three um, instantly ignites the excitement, but um, Munkin, Obviously, offensive coordinator on a national championship team last year. Georgia looks even better this year. Um, he's got some serious, serious um, experience on his resume that's really impressive. I could see him being in the mix there for sure. And, um, you know, likewise, Bill O'Brien has shown that he can stabilize and build up a program and then now is doing some really good things at Alabama as well. Yeah, out of those three, so I don't think Bill O'Brien's a, a, a fit personally. Uh, I think Munkin is really good. I think he'd love one shot like this um, and has deserved to be in the conversation. So I think Todd would make a lot of sense uh, to get an interview. Derek makes Mason, It's uh, it would be a tough follow to Herm Edwards, in my opinion. Um, and you, you got to kind of say, does, does, does what he's done – merit being in that group when you got a lot of other guys who are, are maybe thriving a little bit higher level than Derek right now. So to me, Derek's probably not top of the list. And, and, and I would just quickly say, um, and I've spent some time with Derek Mason before a few years ago at SEC meetings in, in Destin, obviously uh, covered his program fairly closely when I was in the SEC. He's done some great things, but when you go back to 2020 being the end of his run at Vanderbilt, 21, he was at Auburn, 22. Now he's at Oklahoma State. If he goes somewhere again next year, we're talking about that's his fourth different job in four years. That's tough when a program like Arizona State so desperately needs stability and a rock-solid foundation moving forward. Uh, Ray Anderson is uh, still Arizona State's AD as we're uh, recording this. So we all know his background as an NFL guy. So what a, 
an NFL assistant like a like a Byron Leftwich makes sense at Arizona State. I think a, a Byron Leftwich or Kellen Moore at the Cowboys could be someone of interest. I think both of those guys could be. I think Leftwich will get an NFL job in this cycle. I think it's absurd he did not get an NFL head job in the past cycle. Um, so I think Byron Leftwich would have to decide if he really wanted to go to college. Um, and again, Arizona State, in my opinion, needs somebody to come in right now that's well versed with everything college and get that program running seamlessly. Um, and Herm Edwards didn't have that program running seamlessly. The NFL and college coaching lifestyles are so like, just incredibly different. It's a totally different job. I think Byron uh, really likes where he is. Um, I think Kellen Moore really likes where he is as well. So to me, that's, that's a big, it's just a big lifestyle change. Now I'll tell you at Arizona state, it's kind of like Los Angeles. You're recruiting very much locally or you're going somewhere very familiar, like to Los Angeles. It's not a job like Notre Dame or Tennessee where you're getting on a plane and you're going to see people constantly or Oregon and you're traveling all over the place. Arizona State, they're coming to you. You want them to come to you. Um, you w- yes, you'll go to Los Angeles and you'll do some recruiting there, but um, it's not a it's not a crazy grinder recruiting place. If you follow what I'm saying, so it could work, but I don't think that's what they're doing. I'd be very surprised if if they want to trying to lure an NFL assistant out. All right, that's all the guys on my list. Is there anyone uh, I didn't mention that that you guys want to bring up? Uh, I got I got several names that I'm going to run by you real fast. I know we're going long, so I don't want to go forever on this. But Brent Brennan, uh, the job that he has done at San Jose State is fantastic. He's an awesome West Coast recruiter, uh, heck of a football coach. You've seen it. He knows the Pac-12 inside and out. Um, Brent Brennan, I think, harken back, you know, if, go back a year. This is totally different a year ago. Napier still at Louisiana Lafayette. I'm telling you, Arizona State was really the job that he has eyes on. Yeah. Um, so you had Napier, you had Jay Norvell just killing it at Nevada. Uh, Blake Anderson was killing it at Utah State. Brent Brennan, you know, go back to when those dudes were doing the uh, the hammer time shuffle and all that stuff. They were on fire. So got a lot going on there. Holgerson? P.J. Fleck, you know, to those guys? Yeah, I think um, – yeah, I mean, Arizona State is a better job than Minnesota, and Minnesota is a very solid job right now, very, very largely because of P.J. Fleck and just his iron will determination to help drag that program along. Um, Houston, you know, with what they've got coming up with conference realignment and expansion – and Holgo's uh, relationships with some of those people there tight that are integral to Houston and its success. You know, I don't know if I see that one, um, but I don't have his contract in front of me to, to see what his buyout would be in that situation. I've got a couple more that I would throw out. Um, maybe a Bronco Mendenhall, who's already had um, great success in that region of the country, has tremendous respect. Um from high school coaches that he's dealt with all through the years. I've had so many coaches tell me, you know, he's a great man. What a good man Bronco Mendenhall is. He could potentially be a stabilizing force at Arizona State. Um, I still think you talk about going the uh, coordinator route. Could a Doug Belk be in the mix at Arizona State? Um, Houston not gotten off to the start it wants to this year uh, in the wins and loss column and probably not on, on either side of the ball, offense or defense, but we've talked and written extensively about Doug Belt being an absolute rising star and commodity and coaching. A couple other coordinator names I would throw out would be uh, Kendall Bryles, Jeff Levy, and Josh Gaddis at Miami. I think all three of those guys will gain gain traction in this coaching cycle, four power five head coaching jobs. This and Nebraska obviously are the two first power five jobs to come open. I think those guys will will have a chance in one of the quote-unquote big boy jobs this cycle. I'll give you a, a, another maybe off the wall, not off the wall name, but I'll tell you Robert and May. Robert, who was with Bronco at Virginia, went up to Syracuse and uh, is doing special things up there. So Robert was at Arizona, right? Way back when, not way back when, uh, you know, knows, knows the region inside and out. Um, 
boy, he's a he's a good ball coach, guys. Uh, Robert would be a very, very interesting guy. He'd come in and bring a program, very well-structured, disciplined, uh, interesting. And the other one, so agents love to use interest and potential interest and things out there. Mike Norvell's been in a tough spot, right, at Florida State. He's got the history at Arizona State. Uh, Mike Norvell's off to a good start. Is there interest? Is there real interest? Is there pseudo interest? Is there something to get Mike Norvell a contract somewhere? That was that was in my notes here for this podcast. That was literally the next person, Scott, I was about to bring up is that he ha- he helped Arizona State have some really nice success out there. He looks like he has stabilized Florida State and maybe helped turn the corner. Um, but with Mario in Miami and Billy Napier in Florida, Gus at uh, Central Florida and all of that, would he look long and hard at a uh, triumphant return to Arizona State? I think there would be potential mutual interest on both sides there. These guys, these these top 20 type coaches who are here to win a national championship, that's really what they care about. They want to win national championships. And they look at their path. And if you're sitting there and you're saying, I'm at one of those schools, I mean, these are really, really good schools. I'm at a top tier program in Florida. It's still hard to get to a national championship. You got to win the ACC. You got to win the SEC. This is tough stuff. Pac-12? Yeah, it's not that tough. It's not. Sorry. It's not. <laughs> I mean, Arizona State is a gold mine. It's amazing that they haven't been better than they've been going back five years, 10 years, 20 years. You know, I can remember really one time in my 30 years of following the sport that they've been in the national championship picture back when they had Jake Plummer. So uh, it should be, it's, this is more than a, this is better than a one in 30 years program. This is a, this is a, one of the most underachieving programs in college football, given its, its natural resources. Agreed. All right. Uh, this search will progress in the next few weeks. I think you'll know a lot about this one by say like week C, week, week six, week seven of the college football season. And then it's going to go into hyperdrive. So the agents are out there doing their work already and uh, they will be trying to muster interest and, in, uh, or, you know, written interest and in, and get their guys some contracts somewhere. So there'll be a lot of fun with that one. Uh, we will try to keep you informed of, of the real on the scoop footballscoop.com hit the scoop learn everything you need to know about the coaching world gentlemen any last words before we sign off um i'm disappointed we didn't get any sort of uh random interjections that we got on sunday about uh mustaches i i, I support a random interjection any at any point any podcast the football scoop podcast is always fun we appreciate your time gentlemen everybody go out and have a wonderful day god bless